That's the epiphytium there, the last visible morsel terminate epiphytium. What's left then? Now remove the hypophygium from below here, the genium from above, and here we have just gentle capsule blood. Yeah, so there's a ventral view. We remove the epiphygium from there. Now we've got a bond this muscle that has left. Here are the paramears, right there, right there. This middle valve, you can see nice little layers of muscella, and the fused medium valves make up the idiotic sort of middle. Now, in the case of these army ants, they're basically fused together, and if you try to break them apart and separate them as you do the, treat them separately as you do treat separately the parameters of all cell, it makes for a not a very clean break. That's why I prefer to take out, for army ants, take out the pediagus as a single structure. Here's a dorsal view with the same basal ring, the paramere right here, and over here, just very big up the all cell, the second one there, and then this large pair of plates of all single fused structures of pediagus. Lateral view, the basal ring, paramere, the bolsellian, the are kind of hidden. You just make out the tip of the ADAs right there. In most ants, the basal ring is just a small, thin structure above that, it's that width. Here it's the distance. On this much enlarged structure, that's one of its nickels. So, interestingly, it's actually reduced in size in the old one. So, I just I just have to, I just sort of brute force it. Okay. Maybe uh, iris is would help. Okay. So now you get a better view of the cell. Intermediate valve there, see this one here? This is a little bit better than the over the face of the Mediagus, the cell of the character. internal mesial view of the left mosella and left paramere. And so the standard view that you would see, now in this internal mesial view, where's the anterior end? It's over the right, right? Posterior. So that's not the really standard view. The standard view you'd want to have of this would be something like that. Now that does hide the balsella, but I would want to have this on a point so that if the point comes in over here, I can sort of see this part clearly here. So I make a little platform of, of uh, and I just let it sit on the platform and gently pull it out. This is a ventral view of the last visible abdominal sternum, anterior part to the left, posterior part to the right. And it has the characteristic biaculia or uh, bifurcate posterior margin, which characterizes virtually all army ants and indeed much of the doorline, dorylomorph group. So well, this one almost doesn't need a platform. It's such a robust structure, I just pull it out as it is. So here's a nice view of the right volcella, because the paramere came out and the adiagus came out when I pulled it out and the volcella was left over. Maybe we'll just sort of take that as it is. So if this is the left lateral view of the paramere and volcella behind, how would you normally point out an ant? You don't, you come in actually from the other side, right? So think of this, just think of this as being equivalent of the whole body of an ant. So if you really want to do this sort of really properly, 
then you would now take this structure, this is now thinking this is equivalent to the whole ant, and you're going to want to come in on this side to the point where the forceps tips are, right? Because when you later pick up the point, you'll have that nice left lateral view. That's because you're left-handed. That's because I'm a south problem. Let's stand left-handed. If you're doing, if you're, if you're right-handed, then you'll do it the other way around. You'll do it like this. I'll pretend I'm right-handed. And you come bring the point in from this side, right? So this is now the equivalent to having an ant specimen with the with the head there and the metasoma there. The venter, this is the underside here, and you're bringing the point in from the right side, right? So that's perhaps the way some of you are doing it. Those of you who are right-handed may find it hard to hold the point with your left hand. For those of you who have no trouble holding it with your left hand, you would be, be the opposite. So remember this trick now when you're point mounting it's delicate structures. Rather than having the glue sitting by the side of your bench, you also make a platform for the glue too. And this way you can bring that drop of glue very close to the structure you're point mounting. So I'm going to bring this platform of glue right in next to the structure that I'm point mounting. The internal right side of the, of the left paramere, right? So when we now turn this point around in a standard way and stick a pin through it, we'll have a nice left lateral view, basal ring, paramere, and inside there will be the balsella. I'm going to go back to being left hand. This is the adiagus, and you don't want to, I, I, wanna, I don't want to get much glue on this, so I'm just going to glue it at, at the uh, at the base. So we come over here to our little platform of glue. I think that'll be sufficient. Here's the hypopygium. It's the posterior part that's really important. I just want to get the point somewhere <coughs> on the base there, so that it'll hold. So we've now got these three main parts of the genitalia glued in such a way that when we put the points, pins for the point, they will be in the same orientation as the actual male specimen to the male. So this is kind of nice because everything's sort of pointing in the same direction as it would be if it were inside the male. It just helps to keep kind of track of directions a little better. When I'm doing the other half of the genitalia, I'm kind of not so, I'm not so fussy because it's kind of like I do put the right side done. I just, you know, kind of make sure I preserve the other half in case you lose one of the bits. We ant people are funny folk, and we even point mount big ants like this male labidus. Now, what I'll do often with a big alate like this is um, make a platform for the point to sit on it. Because if I would have put the point on the venter now, on this coming in from the left side, because I'm left-handed, I pre-make a little platform, a little platform of cardboard. So when I stick the point on there, the left uh, extremity of the point sits on that platform. And until the glue is hard, it'll just stay there. It won't, it won't droop down on the specimen. I squirted that glue onto this piece of cardboard about uh, two minutes ago. And it's now about the right consistency for a large ant. In dry conditions, you let it sit there for 10 minutes and you're okay. Under these conditions, leave the point without a pin through it for as long as 12 hours. Thank you, Philip. Okay.